<laughs> Let's move on now to our third email of the day. Sure. And the third email today comes to us from one of our Patreon supporters, Ian Barth, who writes, Well, the numbers are in, and Captain Marvel has made exactly what John Campius said it would make, 90 to $100 million. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Captain Marvel has made $153 million opening weekend making it the biggest comic book origin movie ever. What are your thoughts on this, and how do you think it will end up doing overall? Thanks, and stay filthy, everyone. Okay, so as I've already mentioned, and you guys know, I was predicting 90 to 100 million. But in my defense, so was a lot of people. Variety uh, initially put its tracking at about 100 million dollars, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and here's why I thought uh, 90 to 100 million. Here's why I thought this. Captain Marvel is a character who has never been introduced in the MCU, who's coming out in her first standalone solo movie, and that's her introduction. Much in the likes of a th original Thor movie, Ant-Man, and recently Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange is in the same boat as Captain Marvel, uh, a character who has not appeared in the MCU before, launching with his first solo film, and he made around $85 million, I think. So I thought, well, yeah, this is a comparable situation. Captain Marvel's going to come out, be really successful at 90 to $100 million, ends up making 153. Now, this is important on a couple of levels. Now, first of all, you said in the email that it makes it the number one origin film. Well, yes and no. What it is now is the number one all-time intro film, what I call because because technically speaking, Black Panther is an origin film, but Black Panther had a big major introduction in the MCU mm -hmm. in Captain America Civil War, right? So that doesn't mm -hmm. really count per se. But if you look at just films that just with characters who just started with their own standalone movie, Captain Marvel is the number one comic book movie ever opening for an intro movie ever. The number two is Deadpool. And now some people would say argue that Deadpool maybe even shouldn't be on the list because technically speaking, Deadpool was seen in that uh, Wolverine movie. Mm -hmm. But this was a totally different incarnation of the character, so I included him here. But anyway, number one is Captain Marvel with 153 million, Deadpool at 134, Suicide Squad at 133, Man of Steel at 116, Spider Man, the original Spider Man, at 116 million, or 114 million, I should say. Iron Man debuted to $98 million. Guardians of the Galaxy debuted to $94. Doctor Strange, as we mentioned, debuted at $85. Thor debuted at $65. And the first Captain America, of course, debuted at $65. So, and even if you want to include films like uh, Black Panther, which was really introduced in another film, Captain Marvel is still the number two all-time origin film for any movie mm -hmm. opening weekend. Now, let's go to the bigger picture. Bigger picture, how does it compare to not just origin movies or whatever, but all comic book, all 160 whatever comic book based movies that have come out? It's now in the top 10 all time opening. Captain Marvel, for all time comic awesome. book movie openings, comes in at number 10 at 153, only beat by films like The Dark Knight at 158, Dark Knight Rises 160, Batman vs. Superman at 166, Iron Man 3 at 174, Captain America Civil War 179, Avengers Age of Ultron 191, Black Panther 202, Avengers at 207, and of course, the current reigning champion, how much longer, who knows, but the current reigning champion, Avengers Infinity War, at 258 million. On top of all those ridiculous numbers... You get this number. The film worldwide has made $455 million in three days. $455 million in three days. That means it's already profitable. The movie's already in the profit. So there go all those kind of theories that Captain Marvel's going to flop and all, all that kind of nonsense. That's gone. So happy. Now, I'm really happy for it I'm too. Happy. But Greg, it does bring up the question. Yes, sir. If, if like a Doctor Strange is opening as an intro movie, all that kind of stuff makes $95 million. Why does Captain Marvel overperform so much? And I've got a theory. I've got a theory, Greg, and I want to share it with you. Here's I hope my you theory. do. <laughs> Here's my theory. I think, because, you know, there's a lot of people saying all, all this fake outrage and all this BS, lying, deceitful, like, smear campaign of people trying to get Captain Marvel to bombing, trying right, to get Captain right. blah, 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 blah. I see it in my comment boxes. Oh, yeah. I, I <laughs> believe, I'm starting to believe, Greg, that that whole thing 
only drove more people. I think that thing got more people interested in this movie. I think it just, it made more people aware. I think the controversy actually increased awareness of the film. So here's my theory, Greg. Here's my theory. Mm -hmm. I think Disney knew this controversy would fuel more people going to it. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that all these YouTube channels and websites that were fueling this smear campaign, I think they're on Disney's payroll. I think I cracked the code, everybody. I think they were in on it with Disney the whole time. They it's not knew the positive this, reviews. It's not they the positive. Knew this, yeah. They knew this thing would just increase awareness and drive up the box office. These sites that were pr- promoting the smear campaign actually secretly, covertly on Disney's payroll to up the box office for Captain Marvel. Am I being facetious? Well, maybe. But... Uh, but I think definitely, though, the controversy did just b- b- spread the awareness of the film yeah. even more. And now, whereas you're getting a Captain or a, a Doctor Strange opening at 85, which was great, yeah. now you got this thing opening at 153. But anyway, Greg, you're seeing these results. I was mm-hmm. clearly way off of my prediction of 90 to 100. Were you surprised by the results that we actually ended up with with Captain Marvel? Were you not surprised? And, and what do you attribute that success to? I'm not surprised. I, I do agree with you because I, I do believe that I, I, re- I heard this in the secret documentary, uh, <laughs> energy, energy flows where attention goes. And I think mm. if there's any type of passion directed at anything, whether it's loving or hatred, if it's just middling, I don't think people would have cared. But I think if there's something where people are hating this before it even comes out, that whole boycott theory, I feel like a good amount of those people probably went to go check it out anyway, just so they can hop on the hate bandwagon in hopes they would hate it at least. Um, I also think though that, you know, you listed some or I think it's really cool that out of the top 10 comics, that's the only one that's the real origin one, excluding Black Panther, but I'm actually there with you on your thought process on that of how it was already introduced in Civil War. But I also think that a big part of what made this movie successful uh, I think it has a lot to do with uh, the ending of Infinity War and Endgame coming mm-hmm. out uh, next month because the ending of Infinity War when Nick Fury um, uh, disappears, what's the correct term? De- decimation? Decimates away? The decimation, he, yeah. Yeah, when he vanishes, uh, he does beep Captain Marvel. So I feel like a lot of this is really depending on people going... I feel like I have to watch this now because I saw Infinity War, Endgame's coming out, they're releasing this so close together. So I'm actually kind of thinking, like thinking about the the long-term box office performance over the next few weeks, if a lot of the word of mouth on this film will be people saying, you have to go watch this movie in order to uh, watch Endgame properly. I think a lot of that is linked to that as well. And so I, that's that's why I think the movie did so well in numbers of like all the controversy did a lot of a lot of generation for it uh mcu's there's just so much uh weighing on this uh the end game release uh, the ending of infinity war uh the first female-led mcu film uh there's there's so many reasons like to me i'm not surprised it did so well but when you were talking about some box office numbers i imagine that you know for iron man or perhaps Spider-Man, the first one, if you adjusted those for inflation, they might be higher numbers than Captain Marvel. Because that's the funny thing about box office numbers. We always go off the numbers and not the amount of tickets that have been sold. And I imagine that maybe for Spider-Man, there might've been some more tickets sold because we also, now with comic book movies, we also get so much IMAX releases and all these things that really help generate the box office. And the genre's growing, right? The genre's going. These are all building on top of, these these are all films that are building on top of the success of the films that have come before them as well. But I still, at the end of the day, I, I just, 153, no way. I, I just yeah, you just couldn't see it. <laughs> I, I did not see that coming. I, I really didn't. Yeah. It just makes no sense to me with Doctor Strange opening where it opened. And, and by the way, I kind of feel like when people are, have asked me after I saw Endgame, but before the the review embargo left, or when I saw, I should say, um, uh, Captain Marvel. Every, mm-hmm. Everybody right now is like, you saw Endgame? No, I haven't seen Endgame <laughs> yet. But with with Captain Marvel, I had when I'd seen Captain Marvel, but the review embargo hadn't left. People are just asking, okay, but John, just tell me this. Do I have to see this exactly, movie exactly. in order to see? And what I actually told them was, you know what? I don't think so. No. I, I mean, think- I think if you're one of the people who you just saw the trailers for Captain Marvel and you thought, this isn't appealing to me, but maybe I have to see it if I'm mm-hmm. going to understand Endgame. 
I don't think you do. I really don't. I think your enthusiasm and your excitement for Endgame will go up, and I won't go into spoilers here. I think your enthusiasm and excitement for Endgame will get all the more hyped if you see Captain mm -hmm. Marvel. But do you have to see Captain Marvel in order to watch Endgame? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you're somebody that the trailers didn't work for you, I think you're safe taking a pass on it. But I, I liked I, it, so hey, there you go. See, I, I liked it too, and dealing with... Uh... So I, I even did a video, uh, put it up on Saturday about a, a reaction to our hate comments on the Captain Marvel review, because I don't, I'm not in love with the movie, but I liked it and I and I did recommend it. I wasn't a big fan of Brie Larson, and, and I, I saw it twice. And on the second viewing, I liked it a lot more. But I've I still feel like Brie Larson could have been uh, more nuanced in her performance. Either way, uh, I, I just seeing all the. The sexism surrounding this film leading up to it. <laughs> the second I heard it made 153 million, I'm like, thank God. I I want this movie to make a <laughs> billion dollars as soon as possible because I want I want that was box office numbers to be rubbing in all those people's faces. I I really wanted to perform super well, uh, even though I'm not in love with the movie by any stretch. I wanted to I wanted to keep kicking ass at the box office right now, and I do agree with you too. I, I feel like there'll be things in there where you're like, oh, I appreciate this more because I saw Captain Marvel. Sure. But yeah. I don't think the whole movie rests on the idea that you have to see Captain Marvel in order to understand Avengers Endgame. Completely agree. 